What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to a, another day, another episode of 30 NSG. On today's show, we're going to be talking about Tomb Raider, Shadows of Truth. Uh, we're going to talk about EA's patent for um, uh, branching battle pass system. We're going to wa or watch. We're going to talk about uh, Destiny 2, the final shape, uh, and what they're doing to the game to bring people back because it's a make or break uh, for Bungie and Destiny 2 at the end here of its lifespan. And then we're going to talk about Star Wars Outlaws a little bit based on did Ubisoft just kill the game before it even came out? And I'm not even talking about of what you think if it's woke or anything like that, just of their pricing structure uh, of what it is. Uh, and then we're also going to take a little bu a, a little fun thing here that right before stream started, I was like, you know what? I'm going to bring up a bunch of people's pictures because people are talking about how k -Vess looks unlike the actress. I said, you know what? Let me let me bring up a bunch of different pictures of other actors that are voice actors in other games and let's compare male to male to female to female and see if they are changing the females to make them more male looking than not. So we'll do that as well on the show. If you like what we do here, we cover news stories and we have conversations about them. Uh, we do this Monday through Thursday from 10 o'clock in the morning till noon Eastern. So if you like what we do, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. And if you'd like to go above and beyond, become a member as little as $5. Okay. Good morning, Eclipse. What's going on, Crowded House? What's going on, Dolphin? What's going on, Robert Jones? Did you talk about the new, about the new Battlefield game yesterday? Uh, we didn't talk about the new Battlefield game. We talked about how Battlefield and Call of Duty are... Don't know where they're going. No, we didn't know because that that technically didn't come out until after my show yesterday. So, <clears throat> you should look at the uh, MJ actress from Spider Man. It's kind of weird. Oh, that's the one I missed. That's the one I missed. I should I should bring that up. Hold on one second. Let me uh, uh Spider Man to. Because I, I have a bunch of a bunch of them. Oh yeah, this is this is crazy. <laughs> it's it's so ridiculous. It's 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 crazy the way. And and for people to be like, yeah, no, not, nothing's nothing's changed. It's like, what? Hold on, let me see. Uh, let me get her in a nice, nice picture here. I'm trying to be I'm trying to be fair. All right, I'm trying to be fair. Is this the actress? Hold on, let me uh This this can't be the actress, is it? Is is this the actress? Is that is that the is that the real actress or no? Cuz I don't I don't know what's real or or or, or fake. Is that the real actress? We'll, we'll talk about this in a second, but I just want to know. Yeah, that's the actress. Morning out. Um... Yeah, I don't know if that's the... I think that's the new model look. Better, more detailed look than the actual human. What happened was the game dev put her face on MJ. I, I'm just trying to figure out if this is the, the main actress. Because I don't, I don't want to say this is the actress and it's not the actress. Right? There's other pictures of her. Hold on. Let me... Um, let me let me find it again. Hold on. Find a minute. Like... Yeah, is like... Is this her? That looks like her same girl that's here because they have a couple people like they have that's like a washed out picture I think that's her I guess we'll go with that all right we'll go with that all right all right Before we get there, that's that's the end of the show, near the end of the show. Okay, let's let's talk about let's talk about Tomb Raider. Let's talk about Tomb Raider real fast, shall we? In the first, like we do here, uh, we we cover news stories, we have conversations, uh, and then we uh, we have back and forth with chat afterwards. 
All right, so the first story I want to cover is um, a two-minute. Okay, British adventurer Laura Croft will transition from being a raider of Tomb Raider to seeker of the truth as Evil Hat Productions and Crystal Dynamics seek to redefine the Tomb Raider series in order to escape the colonialist past. Okay, which I thought was was pretty funny. Okay, so this article, Tomb Raider series escapes its colonial past. British adventurer Laura Croft transitioned from being a raider of tombs to seeker of truth as Evil Hat Production and Crystal Dynamics seek to redefine the Tomb Raider series in order to escape the history wounded by colonialism. According to uh, an excerpt from the official Tomb Raider Shadows of Truth RPG rulebook. Okay. Now, raiding as depicted as the original Tomb Raider games and stories involves going to ancient tombs of historical sites and different civilizations and acquiring artifacts. It operates the assumption of finders keepers that grants raiders with the means that they drive the, uh, to claim ownership over artifacts regardless of whether they have historical culture claim to the treasure, which I find really funny, and we'll talk about this just in a second. It says, later, games released in the franchise have started to work the addressing this by having Laura Croft acknowledge her past mistakes and try to understand on how to show respect for the cultures and communities she comes into contact with. She has also worked in the reform Raider culture and raise awareness to her peers. Now, Laura no longer uh, decorates her mantle with mythic artifacts. As a Raider, she prioritizes seeking out the truth. Much of the game is inspired by humanity's struggle with heroism and the tendency of a uh, belief that they are th there are three aspects of important comp uh, important component in creating a game celebrates history, culture, like acknowledging the respect of work required to live in the world wounded by colonialism. Okay, in this game, we seek to continue in that work alongside Crystal Dynamics by creating a sandbox for you to tell stories to address colonial colonialist themes in play to create your own stories to respect the story for people and cultures your seekers encounter. Do they hear themselves as they write this stuff, right? Do they hear themselves as they write this stuff, right? One, it's a video game. Two, it's a movie series now. Three, it's, let's be honest, it's female Indiana Jones. But the best part is they're doing this because they want to they wanna make sure that you know the history. The history, and it's not just about shitting on people's things like stealing like like taking something and then showing it in a museum to preserve it or anything like that they want to make sure they respect the history of those items so let me phrase it this way tomb raider is an item it's a video game that was back in the uh you know the 90s and early 2000s all the way up to, to now and now they've decided to uh they've changed it in a way where they want to respect the item of colonialism, of colonialist times, okay? So now they're changing it, and I just think it's fucking hilarious because what they say in the thing is, you know, the, the franchise has started to work to address this by having Laura Croft acknowledge her past mistakes. It's like, it's like art represents life and life represents art where in a video game of her collecting fake things that they've created in this video game to give respect to the cultures that it came from from the video game, uh, now the video game itself is that artifact that they're changing to respect the respect of the things in the past that were fake that they made up inside the game. It's 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 crazy. It's it's literally crazy. Okay, it's just a character. It's just a character in a in a video game. Okay, I might even talk about like the way she looks or anything like that. We we actually have a picture of the Laura Croft actress um, when they made the the Crystal Dynamics one when they rebooted it and stuff, but. Like, do they hear themselves? Why? Why do they have to change the things that people like? Just go make a new character. Make Laura Bloff, okay? Make a spinoff. Do something else. Why do we have to change the characters that were already established, okay? Like, it makes no sense to me why they do this. But they do this because they have an agenda. They have to show something. They have to gaslight you. They have to make you feel bad about yourself. They have to make the people that like this. Now, if you like Laura Croft, you know what you are, okay? Right? You can't like the, the character that they created. They have to change her for modern day audience. They have to insert themselves into a character instead of let the character just sit there for themselves, okay? It's absolutely baffling to me. 
Um, so yeah, not only are they changing it for the RPG handbook, okay, but they're changing it also in the video games as well, okay? Yeah, Laura Koff, yeah. <laughs> it's so ridiculous on all the stuff. They're like, what other IP can we shit on and change so people can get upset about it, right? I mean, I'm not upset about it. I just won't partake in it because I'm just like, seriously, you're going to preach to me? You're going to preach to me about what she's doing in the video game now? Right? So it's it's just it's just absolutely ridiculous. Travis says 30, but who gives a fuck about this shit? I do. I do. I care about this shit because I like the things that I like. And those were established and the reason they became popular is because other people also like those things. And now they want to change it because they can't make their own new stuff to tell their stories and do stuff. They have to shit on the things that were already in, in there, right? Now, maybe you don't give a shit, but I give a shit. And because I give a shit, I have my own YouTube channel. I speak on the shit that I care about. That's what I do. Right? The problem is not caring about this is how they get away with this shit. Okay? That's the real, that's the real tragedy here. Just going, eh, it's just a video game. It's just a thing. No, it was a video game, and then it became pop culture. It became popular. And now they know that the IP sells, and they can tell stories with this IP and do what they want as a as a uh, influencer, let's say, right? Laura Croft is an influencer. She's no longer a video game character, okay? Like, I don't want them shitting on any IP that's already established. Make your own new IPs and then tell your stories and insert yourself in those new IPs and see if they sell. See if they sell. Okay. Sarge says, no, they don't. Uh, when you have your head shoved up so far up your ass, it's impossible to see what you're doing, not to mention hear anything at all. Uh, it's, it's amazing. Because in order to change culture the way they want, you have to destroy the culture heroes of the past. That's right. I seriously don't know anyone that had an issue with her old story. Oh, no. I meant that we had an issue with her old stories. Nobody I know. I wasn't defending them. I was just saying nobody had an issue. But that's the, that's the problem. I have a problem with their, what they're doing now with any character. It doesn't matter if it's rainbow bright, okay? All right? If they chart, start changing rainbow bright or My Little Ponies or Transformers or G.I. Joe, I have a fucking problem with that because those things are what they were you don't like them, then don't continue using that IP that was super popular, that made a shit ton of money, so you can then tell your stories and change that character. That's the thing. Alien Fonder says, uh, good thing that the Uncharted series is over now, because someone uh, someone who would find a way to ruin it in, in some way. I mean, Nathan Drake literally tries to steal artifacts for money. Yeah, but that's fine, right? That's fine, Alien. It's Because that's what he does. Indiana Jones does the same thing. It's like, they're trying to grab these things from cultures that were lost in the in the realm or whatever, and they're pr trying to preserve it. Now, you can look at it the other way. Well, they're stealing it from these native tribes and, and whatnot, but at the same time, it's a it's a fantasy. It's a, it's a story told of action, adventure, lore, and secrecy, and, like, spy stuff. And it's just, it's just a cool story. And they're like, how do we fuck it up? How do we ruin this story? I know. Let's, let's make her, let's talk about the colonialism. Let's talk about how she has to respect the people's artifacts that we've made up in this video game. It's amazing to me. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section down below. Uh, are you a fan of just IP destroying? Okay. Uh, and if you are a fan of IP destroying, then let me know what type of IP that you like the best and can't wait for them to destroy your favorite IP in the comments section down below. Please make sure you share, like, subscribe if you like what we do here. Please make sure you check out some of our other videos. Thanks for watching. <clears throat> Let's see what you guys are saying here. Oh, I agree. Leave the stuff that works alone. Just just leave the IPs alone. And if you're if you're going to continue making Laura Croft and Tomb Raider, then continue the story that's been established. 
I don't have one creative muscle in the entire plastic surgery ridden face. <laughs> they are clearly bankrupt and couldn't come up with a new cereal box mascot. I thought the last Tomb Raider games were fantastic, right? Fantastic. Visually, gameplay-wise, they were, they were a lot of fun, man. They're like, how do we fuck that up? Right, make a Spider-Man game, but, but give Superman powers. That's right. If she wants to respect them, she needs to stop raiding them. You know what it should be? Uh, Laura Croft becomes a barista. She's just found a new a new meaning in life, and now she wants to deal with customer service. Right? Laura Croft. What happened, Laura? You used to be a, an adventurer. Well, I just got over it. All that colonialism inside there and artifacts, you know? I'd rather serve the people. I'd rather work a minimum wage job that I can't uh, afford my bills just because I want to see myself in video games. <laughs> I love how they say they weren't going to do this, and then bam, look what happened. Yeah, because we're not doing it means we're 100% doing this. Trust us. Trust us. They are so narcissistic uh, that when they stand in front of the mirror, they claim culture. <laughs> yeah. So what's the problem? I caught the end. The they're, they're changing Laura Croft um, where she no longer steals artifacts, Krebsy. She's learned her lesson. Uh, she no longer decorates her mantle with mythic artifacts. As a raider, she prioritizes seeking out the truth. Uh, so she no longer does what Tomb Raider is because she trying to break the colonialism according to uh, Crystal Dynamics and stuff. So yeah, yeah, that's what's happening. Is this factual or opinion? What do you mean opinion? It's 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 right fucking here. This is it's right here. What do you mean you can't find anything on it? There's a there's a link from Tomb Raider's tweet. British adventurers of Laura Croft will translate right. And then you click on here and it, and it, and it goes here. What, what are we talking about? Can you steal something? Lost so long, so long ago. I mean, you can. Make sure you don't pick a flower. Don't pick a flower because someone owns that flower and you've picked that flower. Now you've stolen that flower. Even though no one's right. If you if you find money on the ground, you got to leave it there. Got to leave it there. I've never played Uncharted Lost Legacy. I, I haven't played it. <laughs> Sorry, I just yeah. Crystal Dynamics owns Tomb Raider at a different company. Owns Crystal Dynamics. It's not Square Enix anymore. Yeah, no. Uh, uh, Crystal Dynamics is making the game for Amazon Games or Amazon Studios, I believe. No, it was released on April 9th. April 9th. Yeah, I love, I love the Uncharted series. I love the Tomb Raider series in the past. I like the new Tomb Raider series. I enjoyed all those games. Jason says, I couldn't get past the 20 minutes of uh, Lost Legacy. All I did was walk around and talk. Well, that's that. funny enough, Jason. That's what Laura Croft's Tomb Raider game would be when she's a barista. You would just serve coffee and, and walk around and talk. That's that's what it would be. Laura Croft, barista. How can I help you, sir? I would like a uh, grande latte. Um, I also had a uh, grande latte once when I was uh, in uh, Tibet. 
getting the uh, the artifact, but then I, I realized what I was doing wrong, and I had to put it back, and instead I, I came here and took a picture of it, and you can see that picture right behind me in Laura Croft's tomb of coffee. <laughs> Let's go on, Grim. Could you imagine? Instead of putting artifacts on her mantle now, she takes pictures of the artifacts and puts it behind her barista. Or she becomes a <laughs> right, right, a carrier. It was the beginning of the last of the last movie. Yeah, she she delivers packages now. I used to deliver. She just it's it's the stories of Laura Croft as she's delivering something. She's like, oh, I had one of these once, and then she starts to tell stories of it. But I'm not like that anymore. And the guy's like, can I just have my package? <laughs> it goes back to like, uh, picture this. She comes out of the vehicle. She's got the package. She looks at it and goes, oh, a vase. I remember I, I delivered a vase one time from the from the the ancient Mohicans, right? And then all of a sudden, it, it, it starts to like go back into like a dream sequence. And then all of a sudden, it's like, hello, uh, can I just have my package? And she's like, oh, uh, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. Here you go. And then she runs back in the truck, and then it goes, and then she goes on to the next, uh, the next house. I think that's what it could be. And she just delivers packages and has memories of what she used to do. Okay, no more murdering. If you guys, you guys, I know a lot of you, maybe, maybe five of you watched my playthrough of Laura Croft when I when I played uh, Tomb Raider. And I was like, this girl's a psychopath, man. She's just murdering people left and right. I was like, and she has no remorse. And this is young Laura Croft. I was like, she's screwed. I had this picture of like blowing up these containers behind me. And I had that like slow motion shot walking away from it with the flames as bodies were all over the ground. I was just like, man, this Laura Croft is badass. Not anymore. Yeah, you got to make Laura Croft a single mom that had a, a you know, a boyfriend uh, that left, never got married. You know, she's, she's got she's got her problems and, and she's in debt, right? She's in debt. You got to make sure that she's got student loans to pay back for the school, trying to start her own business now. You know, you got to you got to really bring it home. Because that's what I want in my video games. Laura Croft, the woke edition. Only like the first uh, Crystal Dynamics reboot Tomb Raider. The rest were pretty mad. I thought they were good. I thought as a trilogy, what they were as a game, I thought it was good with the puzzles, the story, the action sequences. I thought they did a good job. I don't think they're like, just scream home about like, it's a must own, but they're, they're really good. Crudgy says the next Mario will stop chasing after Peach because in 2024, people will view that as creepy. Since he is a, a plumber and applies that he wants to lay pipe with Peach. That's true, Krebsy. That's true. <laughs> I, I I want the game where um, Mario never existed. And uh, Peach is the one that was the plumber. But she can't actually be a plumber because they don't they don't want they don't want the woman to, to do that type of stuff. So she'll have to be a, a nail technician. Uh, and then she fell into a drain pipe. Yeah, and then she became a princess. But a badass princess. All right, the next story I want to talk about. Next story I want to talk about is Electronic Arts has an EA Files patent for branching Battle Pass system. This will be the next story we talk about. Dave Rose says, well, if Mario Odyssey, it's already implies that Mario is stalking her, not not rescuing her, and she is trying to get away from Mario. There you go. I don't remember that. Is, is that what's happening in Mario Odyssey? I didn't play it fully through, so my son's played it and beat it like four times. Look it up. I will. I will. All right. 
So let's go with this. If you guys like what we do here, we, we cover stories, have conversations about them, go back and forth with chat afterwards. Uh, and you can find these, you can watch this whole show afterwards, or you can go watch these breakout videos that I do later on the channel. Uh, on this channel, we do uh, live streams, uploads, podcasts, gameplay. We do a whole bunch of stuff. So uh, appreciate it. Make sure you hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button if you want. If you'd like to go above and beyond that, become a member as little as $5. Maybe I just missed the stalking plot of Mario. I I don't remember. You know. You know what? Let. This is why I like the show, right? Rose said something, so let me, let me, uh, let me look at that. Okay, let's see. It could be that she just isn't up for marrying anyone. Okay, why did Princess Peach reject Mario's proposal in Super Mario Odyssey? Uh, it's clear that she had no intentions of marrying Bowser. I mean, come on. Uh, that's 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 these are off like Reddit and stuff like that. Is Mario stalking Peach? Belongs on Nintendo. Okay, Princess Peach is a character in Nintendo. No, it sounds like recurring theme Mario has to to be someone and that someone is traditionally the peach lady All right. Mario movie Princess Peach did Peach reject Mario all they care about this is their own rivalry they both view Peach as a trophy to be won by their better man oh here we go this is back in 2007 this is why they refuse both of them. Everyone who calls Peach a bitch is for rejecting the proposal sees her as the exact same way. Peach is not obligated to marry Mario just because he saved her. Uh, you see what happens? D do you see what happens when adults... <laughs> I wonder if I... I don't want to do this to my son. I'll be like, so is it true that uh, Princess Peach is a bitch and she didn't want to marry Mario and see what he, what he says? Because I don't think he gets the same picture as as what adults want to represent themselves in a, in a thing. <laughs> There's a lot of theories behind it, sure. Okay, Mario and Cappy explore various kingdoms to collect power moons to fuel Odyssey in the Battle of, of uh, okay, the team, an amorphic rabbit, waiting planners hired by Bowser, who steal items including a dress, a cake, and a boutique from different kingdoms to set up Bowser's wedding. Let's see, uh, let's see, Super Mario Odyssey's story. Task is go to kingdoms to quest to rescue Peach from Bowser. In each of the kingdoms, you'll embark on one of the several main objectives, often earning power moons as a result of these quests. Like, the story is to save Peach from marrying Bowser, is what the, is the main, is the main thing. Right, Krebsy? When, when a joke becomes reality. She's so she's so independent, but she keeps getting she keeps getting stolen by a, by Bowser. She needs no man. She can save herself. That's that's the next game. Mario, right? Mario, they're like, oh no, Bowser's took Peach, and he's like, I'm over that bitch. And just Mario's. It's called Mario Laid Back. He just doesn't give a shit anymore. It's a me, Mario. I don't give a shit. Right? That's that's what happened. Here in this story, Mario doesn't save anybody. 
He doesn't give a shit about nobody. He's just a fat plumber eating pizza, drinking beer with his buddies, watching some football. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He becomes a pirate who doesn't do anything. Yeah, it's, it's just it's just so stupid. Yeah, isn't the, the isn't the latest game isn't the latest game by the story what it's it's called Peach, right? Princess Peach. That's Nintendo DS. What's the new what's the newest game? Princess Peach Showtime, right? That's the that's the one. Uh Princess Peach decides to attend a theater accompanied by her two uh, two of her toads as they arrive wicked sorceries named Grape and her minions of the Sour Bunch invade and take over the theater. Trapping many visitors inside the building, including Peach, who lose their crown during... Uh, so, that's the newest thing. So, I don't think she's saving Mario there. Yeah, she she just saves the theater. Yeah, who who wants these stories? I really want Mario to do nothing. I want Mario on a on a, on a drunk bender that has a gambling problem, and then Luigi has to talk him off the ledge. That's that's the Mario game I'm looking for. I mean, I'll buy a Switch too for that. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what I want. I want I want a Mario and Luigi just scraping by because they never do fucking plumbing, right? They never they're never plumbers. They they can't pay the rent. They they gotta go hit up Peach. They're like, hey Peach, uh, you know uh, we've been saving this the, the entire time. Our business is is not doing very good. You think you could pay us? You know, give us a little bit of money since we saved your ass uh, forty two times. We're just uh, independent business owners on hard times. Yeah, how come that game's not made? Let's go on, L. Go on, Shadow. <laughs> go on, Z. Fucking amazing. All right. Let's go to the next story. All right, so uh, EA. EA files patent for branching battle pass system. A newly published patent reveals that in development branching battle pass system from EA that gives fans some insight into the company's R&D efforts. Okay. A newly published patent reveals that Electronic Arts is working on branching battle pass system that will allow players to navigate a non-linear map and choose their desired reward path. Several patents filed by EA have given audiences insight to this company's research and develop efforts. And this is the latest document that has once again highlighted EA's focus on battle passes. Since its founding in 1982, Electronic Arts uh, has become a powerhouse in video game industry. EA has continued to expand its presence in gaming, becoming synonymous with the numerous sports titles and building up its in-house franchises like the Sims franchise, which they killed, right? I don't mean it's like killed, like they, it's still going. It's very strong. They, they keep doing it, but they literally killed it. Killed SimCity, killed, uh, they, they've killed so many things. Right. In recent years, EA has also constantly integrated battle pass systems into their games, and the recent patent filing system confirmed a company's dedication to monetizing content. You know, no shit. No shit. According to a patent filed in EA in, in August of 2023, the company is developing a new battle pass with branching paths that would allow players to choose which rewards they want to unlock as they progress through the system. Most games utilizing this linear uh, leveling system require players to unlock rewards, 
in a predetermined order. This is a new branching battle pass system. Ooh, new branching battle pass system. Would offer players a non-linear map and unlockables, allowing players to choose and prefer path based on the rewards available. Let me, let me read that again as, as they would like you, right? These new branching pass systems would offer many players a non-linear map unlockables, allowing players to choose their preferred path based on the rewards available. Okay, allowing players to choose their preferred path. Okay, players would also have greater control over how they upgrade their characters, which could incentivize the use of branching battle pass system. However, it is key note that the companies like EA frequently file patents that are never brought to fruition. Oh, this one is. This one is. This one's going to be in there. So there's no guarantee that the branching battle pass will be made available to the public. So here you go, guys. Here's a branching path. We've, we've seen these before in other games. Right, but EA is patenting theirs. Okay, so you, you have the board game scenario here, right? The board game scenario. We've seen this with Call of Duty. We saw this with Fallout seventy six. We've seen this with other type of things. Okay, so here it is. Uh, you got gold. It's locked behind. There's the free one. There's the gold. You got to level up. You can pick the path that you want to take, or I don't know. I don't know. Let me let me put it to you this way. What if? I know this is hard. What if you actually played the game and somewhere in that game, if it was an adventure game, a single player game, I went to this mission and got that reward. Imagine that where I could choose what bad guy I want to fight and play through the game, not grind, not buy, not purchase, just go to the actual thing in the game Fight the bad guy, and the bad guy drops said object that you put in a battle pass. I know. I don't know. Okay, let's look at some of these other things. Okay, so there's... I love. I always love patents. It's like a guy scribbled on a, um, a, a napkin while they were drunk. Okay, you could do maybe track A, B, or C, where you could just go down the path. It's a linear thing. You feel like you have control. No, we've, we've altered it. You could do this one where you could choose the first one and then it branches off, right? So it's grindy. Okay, there you go. There's another figure. Okay. Receive seasonal award information. Display seasonal reward information. Receive selection of seasonal reward and provide award based on tier associated with user. Amazing. So as details in the EA branching Battle Pass patent, the new system would offer players a non-linear leveling system, giving fans more control over how they progress. For example, one path may offer multiple weapon upgrades, while the other one may offer several character skins. Users wanting to improve their competitive gameplay may prefer to focus on weapons unlocks rather than having collecting cosmetics. Now, in a PvP game, what would you guys rather do? If you're in a PvP game, and getting the weapon helps you kill more people, which probably gets you more XP, which then upgrades you faster. What would you rather get? The weapons or the skins? I don't know. You let me know in the comments section down below. So users wanting to improve the competitive gameplay may prefer to focus on weapons and unlocks, like I said, okay, before reaching their desired upgrades. Now, with the branching battle pass system, players would also be able to avoid unwanted items instead of focusing on the preferred unlockables. Similar to the structure of Spread Greed of Final Fantasy X, this branching system would potentially improve some users' views on battle passes, though it remains unclear if the system will ever be released. Now, while the controversies of battle pass remain polarizing uh, among gaming audiences, companies like EA continue to find new ways to integrate the system into various titles and franchises. Whether the branching battle pass or provide breath of fresh air to a frequently used system remains to be seen, but it also seems apparent that Electronic Arts is continuing to focus on battle passes both in games and behind the scenes. Again, I'll say it and I'll scream it from the rooftops. Or take the battle pass that you've made, put it into the actual game. The actual game. I know it's crazy. Okay. I hate all of these things. I hate battle passes and season passes. On top of that, I hate when they put the FOMO in there, where they give you a battle pass or a season pass. And there's a timer on it. You got nine days left. You got eight days left. You got 36 days left. Whatever it is, if they do a battle pass and I buy the battle pass, it should never leave. I gave you $10. You give me all the stuff that's inside there. Okay? that That's the thing. Okay? But no, that's not what they do. You give them $10. And they're like, well, if you didn't have time to play, sorry, we're taking that away from you. 
Season pass, battle pass, all of this stuff. I hate this. I hate where the industry is going. Those of you out there are like, well, it's no big deal. It's just a cosmetic. Yeah, it's just a cosmetic. Dragon's Dogma 2 is not a big deal, okay? Because you don't really need to buy any of the stuff. But the fact is that those games like that, they test the waters. They put it in there to see, okay, well, no one really bitched about it or complained about it. People bought it. They like it because they don't care about the negatives, right? Like if a troll comes in or leaves a shitty comment on my thing, I, I don't look at that. I look at the positive stuff. So when a company looks at it and says, oh, there's 10 million people that didn't buy a cosmetic, but there was 20,000 people that did. And let's try to get that 20,000 people to 40,000 and let's get that to 100,000 and let's get that to a million. And that's what they do. They use it as a test. This is a test. They're going to put it into a system and go, hey, they, they, they really like it. Remember the battle pass used to be in order. And then they changed it. Fortnite decided to do it this way where you, you earn things by playing the game and then you unlock it how you want. But you can't go to the next you can't go to the next tier until you spend enough on this tier. Helldivers is doing it. Now other people are doing it even more. Even so, Fall 76 changed it from the board game route to the more Helldivers Fortnite route. Okay? And this is all a test. So when you see it and go, eh, it's not a big deal. These are all little tests here and there. And if you're the negative one about it and you're not vocal and you're just like, eh, it's not a big deal, it doesn't matter. You don't matter. The people bitching, if you're a small amount of group, that doesn't matter. They only care about... The people, small group over here that's spending the money, and they're like, well, how do we get that number up? We don't care about these people. How do we get this number up? These are just my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comment section down below. What do you think about battle pass systems and season passes and content taken out of video games and whatnot? Let me know in the comment section down below. If you like what we do here, please make sure you share, like, subscribe. And if you like what I do, make sure you check out some of our other videos. Thanks for watching. <clears throat> you can take a battle pass and shove it up your ass. Helldivers is doing it right. They're doing the exact same thing Fortnite's doing. There's no difference between what Helldivers is doing and what Fortnite's doing, right? Fortnite, you earn the stuff, uh, do missions in the board, do missions around, get the war bonds, get the V bucks or whatever the hell it is, and then choose what you want to do, right? That's that's the new mo that's the new model. Everyone will do that model. So much so, Fallout 76 literally changed their model just recently, within the last like couple weeks. Jason says, perfect. More reason not to buy from EA. The problem, the, the, not the problem. The good thing that, that what Helldivers is doing is that you can earn the major currency really quick inside of their game by just playing their game, right? According to what I'm reading on, on Target gives a steel book and I refuse to support Target. Yes, Target has, it's a hundred and something dollars. It is a steel book. It's only at Target. I saw that yesterday. My life is one big battle pass. Yeah, it's the exact same. It's the exact same. You you go do things in the game, right? In Fortnite, uh, go go find this location, go fight this guy, go kill these things, get those rewards, earn the bucks. Those bucks unlock things, and you get to choose what you want to use the bucks on once you get it. Same thing with Hell Divers. Hell Divers, go do these go do these missions, do these missions, get these rewards, war bonds, get these war bonds, and you can choose what you want. But you only can choose what you want on that one page. And then you have to spend enough on that page to get to the next page. So if something's bad on that page you don't like, then you just move on to the next one. But you have to get enough war bonds to and spend to move over to the next one. Super credits farmable on lower levels. Yeah, yeah, Jason. That's what I'm saying. The, the only reason Helldivers is in a good light is because you get the premium currency pretty good at a pretty good rate. For now. For now. Right? Until they squeeze it, if they do. I don't know if they are, but the industry would. Like, if EA had Helldivers, you know 100% they would squeeze it to make it where maybe you get super credits, 
maybe a one out of every five matches. EA would make it after a 0.001% of getting super credits out of five matches, right? So you'd have to play 50 matches. That's what EA would do, okay? Bungie would do the same thing, okay? But because Arrowhead is doing what they're doing, they're doing it right. Bet you the steel book comes with a digital uh, code and not the disc. I, I, it doesn't matter if you get the disc or not. You have to basically put the disc in, which is basically the key. And then that key, you would have to download the actual game onto your, your hard drive. The physical copy doesn't mean anything. You need an internet connection to download the game, even with the disc. Versions, uh, so no point in even buy the physical. That's correct, Jason. That is correct. Let's see. I got uh, two other stories. We're not moving on just yet. It's one crafty. Yeah. So that the problem with with video games now, with the with the battle passes, the season passes, they're getting so comfortable. Look at what Star Wars Outlaws is doing. Right. If Star Wars Outlaws came out yesterday. And didn't tell you about the DLC that they're coming out with the season pass. If they didn't tell you that, which they didn't tell you, you had to go to their website, right? You had to click on the thing to get to their website and click on the website. And then in small print, the vo very bottom, you know, it says like digital only type of stuff. It tells you the season pass is there once you click on the actual thing. Okay. They, they, they don't hide it, but they're not telling you the truth about it. In the past, when you bought a game, okay. You bought the game, and that was it. That you earned the stuff in the game. Now you buy a game. You got to wait 12 to 18 months for that game to be finished because in some way, shape, or form, it's broke, buggy, unfinished, right? On top of that, they have a season pass. They have a battle pass. They have $20 cosmetics. Um, they, they're they they're putting in different, different DLC, cutting it out, right? That's the only way you can look at it, even if they don't do that, right? This is what happened with Destiny back in the day. When Destiny first came out, Destiny 1, 2014, okay, when they showed Destiny, I remember at GameStop, there was a big giant poster. It said Destiny, 60 bucks. Or you can get uh, Dark Below and House of Wolves. They were already selling it. It was 15 bucks a piece. You can get for an additional $30, you got the DLC, okay? That was the first signs of, oh, see, people are buying it and they're getting the DLC. Instead of hiding it, and then people were going, "Oh, well, someone got into the ex someone got into the area, and said they're locking it behind the disc. They're they're locking it behind the actual paywall. If you don't, it's in the game, but they're locking it. And they're like, no, 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 no they're, not, they're not doing that. You, Bungie doesn't do that, right? That's exactly what they did. And if you just market it just differently, you didn't mention anything about DLC. You didn't mention anything about all that other stuff. You just sold the game for what the game was, which is just the game. Here's the game. Then, three months in, when everyone's loving the game, you go, we got our first DLC coming out. It's coming out in December. And they're like, oh, damn. Right? Here it is. Bam. Right? It's like those people weren't going to buy it. They were They were already, they were already hyped. No. But they don't know because they have an unfinished game. And they're like, we got to get as much money out of that as possible. So let's take stuff out of the game. Let's package it as a DLC. Let's get an additional... 30 to $40 off of these people, okay? And that's how they do it. And then they saw that game and they went, huh, you see what Bungie's doing? Bungie did that, and then another game does it. And then the other company comes out and says, did you see what, what EA was doing and, and Bungie was doing? They, that's what they did. And they just constantly keep evolving and they keep constantly pushing the envelope. What can they get away with? Well, let's put a $5 microtransaction in there. Eh, it's not a big deal. Nah, you don't want to buy it, don't buy it. Then they put a $7. Then they put a $10. Then they put a $15. That's not a big deal. If you're not buying, don't worry about it. They don't care about the people that are not buying. They care about the people that are buying. And the people that keep buying is that's the way it's going. Uh, Kind of disappointing in the distribution of the game. 
Why go full digital with fake physical copy only for money grab? Give collectors the deal, uh, the real deal. They'll pay for it. But you have to launch broke buggy and how you you'll fix it best going best ongoing game. That's that's correct. What's going on, Mister uh, Mister Seven Digit? Anyone also think Outlaws looks a bit scaled back compared to what we saw last year? Yes, yes, it definitely looks scaled back. I'm still excited about the game, but I'll tell you what, man. Make the problem, sell the solution. We're going to talk about that in just a second. We're, we have a couple other stories to go with. Um, but yeah, make the problem, sell the solution is what I'll say right now. I just realized Fallout show is out, but not the Fallout 4 next-gen update. Failed opportunity again. I agree, Krebsy. I agree. But they did upgrade. They did update Fallout 76 with new missions just two weeks ago. So that's why there's an uptick with Fallout 76. So they didn't fully fail. They, they, they literally put a skin... Uh, you can wear the 33 vault uh, inside the game itself. So they, they've done a good job there. So I'll, I'll admit that Fallout 4, the next-gen updates, a little little lackluster because they didn't put it out. But they did update Fallout 76, and they have, like, gear and stuff that you can put on that coincides with the actual show. Uh, let's see here. Make the problem season pass the solution. What's going on, Saint? Glad I'm not the only one who thinks that, Same. I've watched the, the first few previews of the game multiple times. We watched it yesterday. We watched it before the news trailer came out, and you can see 100% a downgrade. Uh, I literally say it while we're watching the actual stream. I say it, there's a, definitely a downgrade in the in the quality. Which is fine. I'm okay if it if if the how do I put it? If the drop in quality still gives the story and gameplay feels good, I'm okay with games not looking super hyper realistic. You know what I mean? Isn't the show set ten years before or after? Um, I forget. It's like it's it's a hundred years before Fallout seventy six. I think it's like ten. Yeah, something like that. RPG88 says Fallout show better be wrote, uh, wrote well. It supposedly so far it's getting good good feedback. <clears throat> How is it out already? I know people got early preview, but the normal people can't see it yet, right? It it comes out at 6 p.m. or is it 6 a.m. Pacific? 10 o'clock, or I'm sorry, 9 o'clock. East. Is it is it out now? Or does it come out tonight on the East Coast? I mean, I can't watch it now, but... Yeah, I thought it came out tonight as well, Clips. I thought it was 9 o'clock tonight. 6, six o'clock uh, West Coast, 9 o'clock East Coast. It is. No, it's it's actually I don't think it's on Prime. I think they put it out there or you can get the first episode or something like that. They did something smart uh house where you can watch it without without getting Prime. I think you can watch the first episode, I think. First episode or first two episodes? If you're new to my channel, make sure you hit that like button down below. It helps us out. I'm a really small channel. Um, you know, if, if there's a, there's a, there's a channel somewhere out there that's a million people that you haven't heard of. And then I have 2,300, uh, which trust me, no one's ever heard of. So make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Uh, we do live streams, uploads, gameplay, podcasts. We do lots of different content on this channel. I have a 30 and still gaming channel, which I put other gameplay up over there, like a let's play type of stuff. And then I also have another channel called nerding with 30. You can find all that, but down below here, um, which we cover entertainment and stuff. So. All right, let's go with um, my favorite. My favorite was my favorite game at one point. Um, I did watch the trailer yesterday. Those of you that think I didn't watch the trailer, of course I watched the trailer. Okay, my best friend 
emailed me the trailer and was like, did you see this? I was like, yeah, I did see it. Um, and I, I have nothing. It's almost like a, you ever break up with somebody? You ever break up with someone? You remember them, but they just don't do anything for you anymore. You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking about. Okay. Right? You, you loved them. You loved them, but you're okay if they get hit by a car now. Do you know what I mean? Like, you wouldn't bat an eye. Okay. They really, uh, uh, all the, they released all the powers. Called it new. That's right. Okay. So, uh, we want it to feel like a broken, yeah, we want it to feel like a little broken. Well, that's good, because it, it's been broken for years, so a little broken is fine. Okay, the final shape lights the Destiny 2 on fire with the new subclasses combining all abilities and two-in-one exotics with random rolls. Okay. This, before I even read this, because I haven't read this yet, okay. This is probably going to be the best Destiny has ever been because it has to be. Do you understand what I'm saying? It has to be the best it's ever been right now because they are gambling on it being the best. And if it doesn't do well, they're done, right? And when I, know, when I say they're done, doesn't mean Bungie's done. I mean, the people that work at Bungie right now are done. They're going to move on. They're going to get let go. More people are going to come in, and Bungie's not going to be the same as Bungie was, okay? They're going to make Destiny 3. They're going to keep making stuff, but the people making Destiny right now is not the same people that are going to make the next Destiny, okay? Already changing. It's already changing, right? So Bungie dropped a big gameplay reveal in Destiny 2 in the final shape today, loudly declaring that MMO next expansion is going to take Sledgehammer to every single big uh, build currently available with the wide combination of a new existing abilities. The final shape is adding a new subclass after all, uh, but it's also sort of, of is it? The new uh, prismatic subclass is a mix of light and dark, letting players combine abilities from all five bespoke subclasses in their own way. Melee, grenade, class, super abilities from three light classes and two dark classes. Just to let you know, years ago, on a little podcast that I used to do with Lono, we discussed dark class and light classes like years ago. Years ago, we talked about it. We said, oh yeah, they're going to they're gonna let you control the light and the dark. Uh, okay. Uh, all up for grabs with prism prismatic uh, packaging and new transcendent bar fueled by dealing light and dark damage. The grants and stackable weapon damage bonuses and instantly refreshes our, your abilities and uses special grenades and combine two different elements for each class. Now, Bungie describes Prismatic as the advanced subclass with more fragments, more fragment slots, and much wa uh, wider build craft potential. It's hard to imagine uh, ever using anything else. Well, yeah, why would you? Right? Like, it's the meta, right? That's the meta. The new thing is the meta. Nothing's changed. But we made it seem some buffs and mono subclasses to, uh, to compensate. It seems that only select abilities will be available via Prismatic. But folks, we saw the Arc Warlock using st uh, Strands Melees, Stratus uh, Turrets, and Triggering Void Devourer. It's also uh, the possibilities look endless and somewhat only the beginning. Years after the original Destiny, Destiny 2, it's also uh, exotic class items, but frankly terrifying new ways. With the final shape, players can choose randomly rolled exotic class items that for the first time combine two exotic armor perks into one slot. The kicker is that the exotic perks you roll don't even have to come from the armor available into your class. We saw the hunter using a cloak featuring the exotic perk and the titan exotic, um, for instance. Here, too, is a possibility of the matrix is almost scary. The catch is that the duo exotics are explicitly uh, tied to the prismatic, which only makes the subclass more appealing. Okay, here's a, sni uh, a snip of a concept art apparently cooked up ages ago and shared during today's reveal. Okay, so there's the light and the dark, and they're like, we got to make it. We got to make that. That's what we got to do. Okay, so the blueprint is clear. All the existing powers plus all the new exotics and the light kits and the final shape rework into absurd new custom loadouts. It's Oh, wow. Can you, do can you do loadouts? When did they add loadouts, guys? I haven't played in such a long time. When did they add loadouts into Destiny? It's kind of a thing that Destiny players have fantasized about for years, and even Bungie reckons it feels a little game-breaking. It says, we want to feel like a little broke. One dev says, the new exotic class item sounds about right, but based on combos shown today. Loads for like a year? So nine years? It took nine years to get loadouts in the game? That's fantastic. All right, so here's my thoughts on this, right? Look, I absolutely 
loved Destiny for six years. I absolutely loved, loved Destiny 1. I thought Destiny 1, at the end of Destiny 1, four years in, I thought that was the peak Destiny experience. And then Destiny 2 came in, and then they started gutting everything. They, they told you they had a sunset stuff in Destiny 1, and then they, then they had to bring stuff in. They, they told you if you spent money on the Eververse, this is what made other other content come to the game, which is just laughable. Uh, the way they brought stuff into the game and took it out. And I get it. If you like the game, cool. I saw the wizard behind the curtain. I said, I'm I'm good. Okay. I stopped playing. Um, I think it was Light um, Beyond Light, I think is the one. What, what's the snow one? I forget. Lightfall. I forget what the hell it was called. Okay. But I enjoyed it up to that point, and then I just saw what it was. If you're still enjoying it, and you just, you're, you're, the sunk cost into this game is you have to see it through. I don't. I have no feelings. I saw this trailer and I went, okay, cool. They brought a new faction 10 years in. They finally put loadouts nine years in. Uh, these are these are basic things that should have been in the game from way back when. They stopped supporting PvP years ago. They just didn't care. And because they didn't care, I didn't care either. So I stopped, I stopped playing the game years ago. I have no interest in this game whatsoever. It, like Again, if you have interest in this game, you want to play the game, awesome. Go play the game, have fun. I don't mean that in a sarcastic way in any way, shape, or form. I truly mean that. Have fun in the game, especially now since they know it's all on the line. They, Their words, not ours. They miss sales by 45%, the player drop-off, right? They, they literally, Sony's like, what's happening? Business sense for Bungie's out the door. So now they're like, what do we do to get people back? Well, let's just throw everything at them. Let's give them exactly what they wanted. Loadouts, new people, new factions, some more power, make them feel badass, and have fun. And that's exactly what they're doing, right? That's exactly what they're doing. So I think this is going to be a big risk for them. I think it's going to bring people back. But the player base, the, the, a new player, this is not bringing new players in. This is not bringing new players in. This is bringing old players that had the game maybe come back. I don't know how much you have to pay for. I didn't do the research about it. Maybe you guys in chat can tell me. If I stopped playing three years ago, how much money do I have to put in to catch up now, right? If I want to do all the content and stuff leading up to, to this. Let me know in the comment section down below. Let me know in, in live chat, okay? This is not bringing new players in. New players will be completely and utterly lost. Not until after the game is out and been out and on discount do I see people from new players going and playing the game. New players are not coming. Old players coming back is who they're betting on. They're like, look, everything you've asked for, we got now inside the game. Come on back. Please, please come back in the game. One, for me, I'm not going back. Uh, I'm done. I'm not even going back to Destiny 3 until they show me that the stuff that they learned from Destiny 1 and 2, and they put into 3 at the day 1 start. And then even then, I won't play the game for 6 to 8 months to see if they actually learned their lesson. But these are just my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments section down below. What do you think of this new update, the last update, the final shape? Uh, for Destiny 2. Let me know in the comment section down below. Please make sure you share, like, subscribe, and if you like what we do here, please check out some of our other videos. Thanks for watching. Let's see here. There's a, our limitations on that stuff. There's also a new enemy faction that looks cool. Uh, just shows any Destiny info enters 30's head. It's instantly used because he saw Oz. That's right. New subclass is better than none. Is that lazy anyway? I mean, they could put it in. That's fine. Just not, not getting me back. I literally did a podcast for six years on that game. I said new subclasses. I said all of this stuff in the past. And now here they are four years after the fact. Adding stuff in. Quintar, thank you much for the gifted memberships, man. Thank you very much for that. Appreciate the support. Thanks for becoming a member. They're now copying Warframe. They added the uh, the skate that is also Warframe. Also added the uh, defense missions of Warframe into the... Right, they added the, the surfboard, right? The surfboard inside there. Becoming a member. They finally have in-game LFG. Oh, that's good. Six years later. I remember when Destiny 2 came out and they said they were going to do that. Thanks for becoming a member. Yes, those things should have been there. It's just easy to pick up and get into the gunplay. 
Sure. Sure. Thanks for yeah, it's real easy to get addicted to something. But to, to get into it, it's expensive, right? If you got the free expansion uh, that was on Epic Games, you just need to buy the last DLC. New Light Update is free and will bring you to max level and pretty fun. It has great loot. Yeah, but can I play the story? Can I actually play the content? They give me the, the New Light Update, but is there a story there for me to go back and play? Or is it just bring me up to max level? So basically, I'm, I'm buying the game so I don't play the game. Is that is that what you're telling me, House? Sarge says, uh, so them and they, the headlock, and they have to do everything possible to make the fun uh, game uh, fun again to sell. Didn't care before, they don't care now. The new subclass was built in three months because it wasn't in uh, in the vid docs. Is that fact, Krebsy, or... Or is that a speculation? I'm asking. Looking for group, Travis. All uh, the all DLC bottom of D two is five hundred and sixty five dollars on Steam. <laughs> Get stuff for free for uh, you better for paying for them in the seasons. I mean, I guess. The thing about Destiny 2 is that after the story, you just keep playing Vanguard missions over and over and over and over. It gets boring really fast. Don't pay. No story, just strikes, Crucible, Gambit, etc. There's some story in the seasons that just drag them out, like always. Argus says, uh, I'm very little of the story is left to play in the game, Mike. If you want the full story experience since the game came out, uh, that will not happen. Right, so I have to go watch a Bife video, is what, is what you're saying. So, go play the game shoot some things, but in the background, listen to Bife's voice as as I'm playing the game. Speculation, okay. I wish Suicide Squad had the same luck as Destiny. Ten years dying uh, versus a few months dead. True. True. If the subclass was ready when the vid doc was released, they would have uh, they would have showed it. Maybe, maybe, Krebsy, to, to build up on your speculation maybe because they delayed it they're like what do we do we got nothing and they're like well can you can you add another subclass or like uh what about if we take all the people's powers and put them together they're like awesome that sounds good they're like yeah yeah yeah. it's a good save good save I mean, they just had a huge sale. Get away to Witch Queen, and I'm sure that there'll be more classes or more sales. Yeah, I'm good. I made the joke in the group chat yesterday. I said uh, Bungie was like everyone speculating on their uh, being a new subclass, but they don't have one. They should. We do. In turn, passing out coffee. I have. <laughs> I have a good idea. Yeah. They're like, this is, this is what they did. Ready? They're walking by. They're like, Oh, did you guys, did you guys talk about, uh, why did you guys just take all the, uh, the classes and merge them together? Who had the latte? All right, see you guys later. And they walked away and they're like, who was that? That was the coffee barista guy. Was that Laura Croft? I think that was Laura Croft. And then voila, they have a new subclass. There was a guy on uh, a guy on Reddit months ago talked about the prismatic subclass. Pull out the stops in three months. <clears throat> We're hoping that Chevy Chevy Chase Christmas bonus. <laughs> <clears throat> you like that, Travis? You like that? Comedy. Subtle, but it's there.
Most people get overwhelmed with current build crafting now. Most casual players will just use prismatic eff effectively. Yeah, that's exactly what they don't think about it. They just they just want you to look like this when you're playing the game. This is awesome. You guys, you guys see this? Oh, look at that! Woo! I just blew up that. Did you see that? <laughs> That's it. After City is being the last Destiny expansion, they will also live in the episodes till Destiny 3 is built. Marathon seems like it's going to go to gone to shit and Bungie needs Destiny. I don't know if it goes to shit. Now, let me let me say it this way. Destiny is the was like this. In 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 PR and people playing, I mean tens of millions of people played Destiny. If Marathon comes in and just does anything lower than Destiny, people will look at that as a fail, which doesn't mean it's a fail. It just means it's not as popular as Destiny, you know what I mean? The loot then Princess Peach comes in and serves you a cheeseburger. <laughs> Building craft is not uh, not for me. I don't have time to research all the items and combos in game. At this point, most people follow build uh, follow a builder and do what they say. Yeah, you. Yeah, I I love playing games like that. Right, I love playing games like that. Saint, not just buy the game. Right, no story, just play the game. Look up stuff online. Don't worry. Don't worry about anything, and just shoot the gun. What? What? Do you, what am I supposed to play? What am I supposed to buy? Where am I supposed to go? What is my build? Man, this is a fun game. I don't. I don't game like that. I don't. I don't game like that at all. But I get it. That's the masses, man. That's the masses. Wait, I could pay to skip this. Cool. I didn't know how the uh, positive PvP extraction shooter is going to be on, on console. People might uh, try it uh, for a month because it's something new and from Bungie. And let's see those numbers after that. Yeah, I don't think it's doing very, very good, but I don't think it's going to fail. I don't think it's going to fail dramatically, right? I think I think Bungie itself has a lots, lots of goodwill, right? Regardless, regardless of my opinion of what Bungie is now, they had me hooked for six years. That is very successful. Right, for a game to hold my attention for that long. And I'll, I'll talk about constantly just going, like, periodically going back and forth. No, I was playing Destiny lock solid for four years solid. And then the last two years, five and six, I was playing it th two times a week, three times a week type of thing. I had thousands of hours inside that game. You know what I mean? So if Marathon comes out and people are like, man, I... They made Halo. They made Destiny. I trust them. They're going to make a good game. That's how it is, man. The problem with Division. Division held me for... I have I have hundreds of hours. I don't know if I have thousands of hours in it yet. I think I'm close to a thousand. The problem with Division 1 and 2, Travis, is that I learned from Destiny not to play a game like I played Destiny. So I, I played Division... I beat whatever the story is and I put it down and I come back. I don't have anywhere near the same amount of time inside of Division 2. Even though I've been playing for five years, I'm nowhere near the, the amount of hours played in, in Destiny than I have in Division. Like, Division's much, much less. I don't have an addictive personality. I just don't, right? But Destiny was the closest to me where the first year, two years, right? I was locked in. That was the game I played every single day. If they make a futuristic Tarkov, I'm in. Yeah, I think a lot of people, look, they just trust Bungie. But I'm, I'm telling you right now, the Bungie that you see right now is not going to be the same Bungie. So hopefully that you get that game. 
that Marathon is. I, lots of people are going to be leaving that company by their own report. If this doesn't do well, they're done. Contracts are up, and they're gonna they're gonna boot them out. <clears throat> Proud says extraction shooters are balls. <laughs> Tell us how you really feel. How you really feel about it. I played Destiny 1. I played Division 1. Like you played uh, uh, D2, 30. Got burnt out and didn't even try Destiny 2. Yeah, I mean, that that's just it. Destiny 1, I was all in for those four years, man. Destiny 2 came out and I went, what is this? Like, what is this? I did see the update. I was going to test it out, but we're, we're playing Helldivers tonight. Uh, Kingard's going to join me tonight. Uh, and we have two spots open for tonight. We're going to go uh, kill some uh, automatons tonight. We're playing Helldivers tonight, 8 p.m. Eastern. Come on, Roadkill. If you guys like what I do here, I do this Monday through Thursday. We have conversations back and forth. We go over news stories. Um, if you watch this after the fact, um, obviously you don't get the same experience. I, I answer, I talk to everybody in chat, right? Because I'm a small stream and because we have like 44 people, 44 people right now? Yeah, 44 people right now that I talk back and forth to whoever. It doesn't matter if you're a member or not a member. I talk to everybody in chat as much as I can, okay? If you like it, make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. If you'd like to go above and beyond that, we have a really nice community here. Uh, you can become a member as little as $5. We do live streams four days a week. We do gameplay three times a week. We do a podcast one day a week, which is Thursday nights called Generation X Gaming right here on 30NSG. We do uploads every single day. So if you miss this long stream of that's, that's two and a half, three hours long, uh, you don't have to watch this in its entirety. You can wait, wait for the breakout videos that come out afterwards, which are uploads, um, which is just basically the story, my thoughts, and that's it. You don't get the banter back and forth or anything like that. We don't even know what Marathon is still an extraction shooter. Recently, it said it was becoming a hero shooter. That's true. That's true. I remember that now. You know what I might do one day? Let's say I'm doing any kind of recent. Maybe what we'll do is when Destiny's done, I will, I will go back and just for a night, Start a brand new character inside of Destiny 1 and just get that experience again. And we'll have like a little a little play of one night, two and a half hours, three hours of just playing a character and leveling up a character and going through uh, Destiny 1. Because that was, that was some really cool shit when it came out in 2014. Waking up in the, waking up outside the dam or the, the city and then going through and then it was good times, man. It, it captured something back then. And un, and like, like uh, Call of Duty and Battlefield, like we talked about yesterday, Destiny, when Destiny 2 came out, they kind of just lost their identity. I don't know if they lost the passion of what they were trying to do and they had to settle, but it was just, it was just different. It just everything about it, man. The potential. When you first played Destiny 1, and you're like, you knew 10 years. 10 years. Now, hindsight's 2020. You look back and go, hmm, right? But when, when they did Taken King, and they did Forsaken, those, those, two, those two moments in Destiny were fantastic. For after Forsaken, it just wasn't, it just wasn't the same. Can Destiny 1 still be played? Yes. Yes, it can. I really believe it was management. I know it was management. 
I said that for years, House. I said they don't know how to manage money. They don't know how to manage money. I'm waiting for the for the news next week. Destiny One server shutting down. I'll tell you what the best the best Destiny wasn't even made by Bungie. It was made by High uh, uh, um, was it High Moon? High Moon, right? High Moon Studios. See, my brain always goes out like that. COVID now, I swear to God. Oh, Vicarious Visions. That's what it was. It wasn't High Moon. High Moon was, I'm thinking Transformers. Vicarious Visions. You are correct. Vicarious Visions was the main one I was thinking of. Not High Moon. No, I know, I know it had both, Bo, but Vicarious Visions was the one that, that did it. That was the, that was the main studio that was doing it. High Moon was a was a supporting supporting studio. High Moon makes good games though. Getting old? No, it's COVID. No, no, it, it really is Z. It may, make the joke. That's fine, but I, I, it really is. For the last couple of years, I can remember a lot of stuff, but the, the, I see it's just hard for me to get words together. Rip by Curious Visions made one of the best remasters of Tony Hawk 1 and 2. Still upset they disbanded them. Yeah. All right. I want to go into this next. It's not really a story. It's more of a talking point of did, did Ubisoft screw up with the pricing that they're doing with uh, with Outlaws, okay? I am a big fan of Star Wars. I love Star Wars. I was Outlaws was my game that I was looking forward to the most. I was like, this is it, man. I was like, this is the game I was looking for. But then they showed they showed the pricing yesterday, okay? And just like I talked about how Destiny screwed it up, right? About 20 minutes ago, I said this. Destiny screwed it up when the game first came out, and then they started selling the DLC before the game launched because it was locked behind the paywall, okay? So here we are. The standard edition is $69. Now, it's already a, a, a hard sell because games are $70 now, okay? And there's so many games coming out that are $70, okay? But you look at games like Skull and Bones, which was charging way more than it should have been charged for his quadruple A game, okay? Was a was a bad game, okay? You look at other games that come out that are broke, buggy, unfinished. You look at a Suicide Squad, $70, maybe not worth the $70, hindsight looking back at it and whatnot, okay? But you look at this, and the standard edition is just a base game and a skin, Okay? Seventy dollars. That's what you're getting. Now we don't know how long the game is. Let's say the game is standard twenty hours. Let's just say it's twenty hours, right? And you look at this. And going back, way back, I've even told stories of my mom buying a Atari game back in the day in the in the mid '80s. That was seventy dollars, eighty dollars. I forget, Sarge. If you're here again, I always forget what it is. I think it's like seventy, eighty dollars. I was a young kid at the time. Okay, and that was back in the '80s. Games being that, but the problem is that's a one-off. That wasn't all games that cost that price, right? It's, it's more like supply and demand, okay? But as I talk about this, I always say make the problem, sell the solution. I said to, to, to Xbox when they were doing Game Pass, the problem is when game prices go up, Xbox Game Pass wins and PlayStation Plus wins and all these other streaming services win because if the games keep going up in price, 80, 
100, 130, okay? People look at it and go, well, that Game Pass doesn't look that bad, day and date. PlayStation Plus doesn't look that bad, right? Ubisoft Plus doesn't look that bad. EA Play doesn't look that bad. They price it so high that you're like, ugh, man, I got, I got this, I got Wuhong, I got... I got whatever game is coming out, right? I got the Elden Ring, right? You got all of these different games coming out that you're spending. And this is, right? This is like luxury, man. Gaming is a luxury. It's like owning a boat, jet ski, motorcycle, whatever. This is a hobby. And the hobby is getting really expensive for a lot of people that want to play games. And the gaming companies are spending so much money developing their games, okay, that they have to start charging these outrageous prices, right? So a lot of these people, $70 for the standard price, the base game plus the bonus pack, with a three-day early access, this gets me, this this were, this gets me so frustrated. Okay, again, value of money is perception of whoever. Okay, it's subjective, but when you charge seventy dollars for a Friday release, which is their release date, okay, but then you charge an additional forty dollars, okay, forty dollars on top of that for the three-day early access, right? And this is exactly what I'm talking about. Suicide Squad did three-day early access. They only charge you $30, okay? Ubisoft's like, hmm, they paid the 30. Let's see if we can get it just a little bit more, right? Let's go with $40. So now they go with $40 for the three-day early access. So now you're paying like $12.50 per extra day. Or whatever it is, right? It's actually like 13, 13, 25 or 13, 27, whatever, whatever the fuck it is. Okay. But now it's $109 for now a Tuesday launch instead of a Friday launch at $70. But you're getting three days early access and you get the season pass. Okay. But you don't know when that season pass is coming. It could come next week. It can come six months from now. It can come two years from now. If the game bombs, do they even have to release that content? I'm looking at you, Redfall. Where is that DLC for Redfall that people paid $120 for? Where is that DLC that they paid up front for? Okay. This is exactly the problem. Then you go to the Ultimate Edition. The Ultimate Edition is $130. $130. And what you get there is you get the base game. You get the bonus packs. You get the three-day early access. You get the season pass. You get the, the another bundle. You get two more bundles, and you get the digital art book. Ooh, digital art book. I don't even get physical stuff anymore. I'm not getting a physical game. I'm not getting physical gear, right? It's all cosmetic stuff inside the game. And how often are you going to change your outfit in the game? Okay. And then on top of that, because it's a single player game, by the way. Okay. They put a digital art book. Great. Can I look at that art book even after you shut the servers off two years from now, three years from now, five years from now? Can I still access that digital art book afterwards? Probably not. And then there's the solution. The solution to the problem. The problem is gaming is getting too expensive. The problem is that they have to put it towards the customers and it's $70 now, soon to maybe be 80. The problem is now it's $109. The problem is it's $130 now. So the solution is we got you covered. Not only do you get the base game and the pack, you get the three-day early access, you get the season pass, you get the other bundles and the digital artwork, but that's included for $18 a month plus tax. Okay, $18 a month to get Ubisoft Plus. You can play this game and we'll get you coming back. Now the season pass is included. Think about the, the logic here, right? The season pass is included with the $18. Is it? Because if I pay $18 and that season pass doesn't come out six months from now, okay? I'm going to stop paying. I'm not going to stay with your Ubisoft Plus. I'm going to cancel my subscription. Sure, when I come back and pay another $18, then I get the season pass when it comes out. Okay, so now I'm at $36. Okay, 18, and then I got it for another month for $36. And then I got to come back again for the last season pass or wherever many seasons are going to get. That's another $18, right? So now I'm at 52, I'm at 60 bucks, right? I'm at $60, right? I'm at $64, right? Is that what it is? Because it would be 36, 60, 72, right? It'd be, seven, it'd be $72. So you might as well already buy the game, right? So they're like, oh, well, I'll play for $18, but there's a season pass. Well, if I get the season pass, then I get it for the... But here's the thing. Ubisoft games go on sale like two, three months afterwards. If you look at Skull and Bones right now, you can get that on, on discount. Avatar, you get that on discount. So it's like, why do they do this? They're looking for the small percentage of just like the people that I said earlier, right? They don't care about the people that don't like it, right? They're not going to listen to me telling you that this is bad, right? 
people are not going to care about that. They're going to care about the 10 people, 100 people, 1,000 people, million people that buy the 70, that buy the 110, that buy the 130. And the people that bitch and moan about it obviously doesn't matter because you're not buying it, so they don't really care about you. They'll they'll dick over the people away on the, on the front end. If the game comes out, it's a single-player game. Hopefully it works. Hopefully it's not broke, buggy, or unfinished. And it's a good game. I, I really hope it's a good game. But time actually has been in my favor. For most games that come out are broke, buggy, and unfinished. Unstabilized, drop frames, opt, un, un, uh, unoptimized, and all these other problems. And when you pay $130, $110, and $70, that's pretty shitty. But the solution, again, is the $18, right? So this is just in America. Okay, when you go to other places, okay, that same that same ultimate edition is a hundred and seventy dollars Canadian, ninety dollars Canadian, a hundred and forty three Canadian, right? It gets way out of control. And when you look at this and go, well, how it's it's a video game, and we're paying a hundred and eighty dollars for a video game, you could buy a system for this, okay? You could buy a used system with like 10 games for the price of this one game that if you just wait two months, it will be on discount for $40, okay? It's absolutely crazy, and I think Ubisoft has literally lost their goddamn mind, okay? But you know what? It doesn't matter what I think because there's going to be people that buy this. There's already people that bought this because the graphics, because of Star Wars, because of these things, your nostalgia... The fandom, fandom, is that even a thing? Fandom, right? Fandom of Star Wars keeps bringing people back. But these are just my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comment section down below. What do you think of Star Wars Outlaws? You might love it, but is it out of your price range? Is it too much for a video game? Let me know in the comment section down below. Please make sure you share, like, subscribe. And if you like what we do here, please make sure you check out some of our other videos. Thanks for watching. All right, let me scroll back up. I know you guys are still talking here. Lots of uh, conversation. Uh, let's see. That's the Destiny talk. I'm forgetting names and actors and things I know for years. Zeba, did you have did you have COVID? Did you have COVID? Travis says I'm still excited for it. So Survivor is good. Survivor is good now. Almost a year later, though, Mo, the optimization for PC was horrendous. I didn't have that big of a problem on console, and I enjoyed Survivor as, as a story. Right? But people that paid money up front for that game and had to wait for it to be fixed and optimized, that's the bad part. PL says, I'm sus about Outlaws. Still hoping it's good. Kylo says, this one's going to be <laughs> Quintiplet A. 5A Studio. Uh, 129, they they can keep that shit. I'm getting standard, no question. Al Dente says skip, which is big because you're a Star Wars fan. You're a Star Wars fan. Does the A's count for digits or game price? Oh, that's another thing I forgot to put in that in that little rant. It's all digital. It's all digital. It's not even physical copy. Is this game not a single player game? Oh, season pass, not a battle pass. I'm getting Ubisoft Plus and getting the better edition of the game for $18. Going to plow through it and cancel Ubisoft Plus. Right. I'm paying the $75, but not getting the gold anymore. Travis, but I have a question. Why are you getting any digital copy of the game? Even physical is still digital, right? And my question, I'll see it in a bit when I scroll down. Why not get the the month game, play it, and then put it down? Or wait till it goes on sale? May squeeze in Assassin's Creed Mirage, Prince of Persia, in the month of Ubisoft Plus as well. Oh, that's smart too. That's smart. I still remember even uh, NES games that were still uh, still in stores. It was like 50 bucks, I think, back then. Best time as a kid was walking into a fun uh, Funko Land. And every complete game there, new, was 50 bucks. Would stay there for hours playing the, uh, the demo kiosk. Oh, yeah. I, I used to love 
demo kiosks. Those are the best. Man, I hope playing uh, Myth is good. As it looks, it will be a, a big game of the year. It's not even close for it. Uh, let's see. Keyword complete game being 50 bucks. That's right. Complete game. Let's see, pay $17 for the one month. I would say popular of streaming also helps the publishers raise the price, but it's also, I do agree, it boasts the subscription too. Beat it in two days. It's going to take uh, take it and be done. For $130, I should be getting Mara Jade. <laughs> Money up front promises if DLC that never comes and then blame you for not buying enough. Yeah, where where is the where is the DLC for Redfall? Is it out yet? What happened? People paid for that. What happened to that? Argus says, "Well, think about it. For eighteen dollars in one month, I'll be getting deluxe edition of Assassin's Creed Mirage, Star Wars Outlaws, and Prince of Persia, all deluxe edition. That adds up to probably around two hundred fifty dollars. Right, right. And what they're hoping, though, Argus, is that people get the subscription model and then forget about it, and then they get the eighteen dollars for twelve months." Right? Because if it's a broke, buggy, unfinished game, it doesn't matter. You're paying $18, and when they finish it, it's finished. All turns is just wait for all season passes to come out and play it then. One go for $18. That's right, All turn. Right? The longer you wait, the better it is. The better consumer you are if you wait. All 30, they don't care about me? Yeah. Ubisoft says $18 isn't that much. Milk me, daddy, for 72 I don't know about if PlayStation has Ubisoft Plus. I think it's only Xbox, right? I don't know if PlayStation has Ubisoft Plus. I think it does, Eclipse. I'm not sure. It's a separate, it's a separate thing that you can get on either console, I, b I believe. Oh, it's only select titles. Is salty? Is salty saying? Uh, I just lost. Uh, oh, there it is. Okay. Alien Fodder says, "Uh, this is why I almost never buy brand new games anymore. You guys complain that games are expensive in the U.S. See, see, it's like in Canada. Yeah, that's that's crazy. That's crazy. If you want to buy the standard edition." Okay, the standard edition for you guys is $90. Brazil must be like 210 <laughs> Brazil must be out of their mind over there, right? Because they, they, if you guys are paying 90 Brazil's paying 150 for the standard edition. You're not wrong. If the Star Wars IP wasn't attached to this game, I probably wouldn't even care about this game. Th that's exactly right. It's exactly right, Kylo. I'm glad you actually brought that up, right? If if this was just generic character, which it is, it's a generic character you're learning about in this game, okay? But because you don't know about this, but it's in Star Wars, you're like, it's set between Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. I'm in. I'm in, right? If this was Space, space Wars... You'd be like, I don't know what this is. It looks, it looks, it looks pretty good, but I'm, I'll wait till it goes on sale. Uh, let's see. I uninstalled it in third chapter. Very no no for me now. Did you stop playing it because uh, it, it was broke for you, salty? I've been thinking about replaying Jedi Survivor again. New game plus. It's a great game, Survivor. And, or, I'm oh, sorry, uh, Jedi, was it Jedi Fallen Order? Yeah, Fallen Order and Survivor. Both great games. Both great games. Sad that they came out, or Survivor came out unoptimized and kind of broke for PC. Um, but now that you play it, it's actually a really good game. Story-wise, gameplay-wise, it's fun. Travis says, uh, because I don't know if I can do PSN wallet for it. I don't have a credit card. I pay for all my games with prepaid PSN cards. But why don't you just get a prepaid? You can get a prepaid card. Um, 
for like like American Express or whatever gift card type of thing you can use. They, like Visa card or whatever. <clears throat> Why are people still pre-ordering from digital stores? The game is not sold out. All the servers for you is download. Why not wait until the game is out and see if it's worth it? Because people are addicted to video games, I'll turn. And one, they don't like to be told what to do. <laughs> two. Hey, that's, that's two. That's why. People are addicted and they don't like to be told what to do. They're like, it's my money. I'll spend it how I want. <clears throat> and this, this is why I try to give as much information as possible for people. Because I don't want to tell people what to do. I'm just trying to educate people so they can make the choices with the information. <clears throat> right there's no reason to buy the game at full price. Sorry, but there isn't. Yeah, there isn't. How much was Jedi Survivor's biggest bundle? Uh, it was it was over $100, if I'm not mistaken, Krebsy. Oh, there's definitely a, there's definitely a Star Wars tax, Krebsy. Definitely a Star Wars tax. Paying extra for the early access is a trap. Half of that will be a server crash or non-functioning. You're not wrong. It's a single-player game. It probably will have uh, it will probably have problems. Hundred forty dollars U.S. equals almost two hundred dollars Canadian. So uh, it makes sense for the difference in price. See, I can't wait for uh, the Assassin's Creed. Uh, Canada prices are cracked head prices. I think Australia is like a hundred. Yeah, some of you guys backlogs. Some of your guys backlogs are like twenty twenty five. Like games now will be in like played in twenty twenty five. We we read that article yesterday. Most PC gamers are playing nine point six games that are nine years old. PlayStation is playing nine point six years. Xbox at nine point two years. Right. I'm sorry, 7. 7.2, 7 7.6, and PC's 9. The only console that's playing kind of current games is Nintendo at 3. 3.2, I think it was. Hundred and eight after Jedi Survivor. Dolphin says, I'm the problem. <laughs> yes, Magic, you are. Seek help. If uh peeps keep buying, peeps keeps uh uh and, and streamers don't help. Yeah. Yep, yeah, because this is why if when I play the game, I'm gonna play the eighteen dollars. But after that, the DLC, I'll probably just wait. Because I don't want to pay $18 to get the next story and then wait another six months for that the next story. So I'll pay the $18, play the shit out of it that one month, okay? And then I'll wait till it to go on sale until it's like 40 bucks, $30 somewhere. And then I'll, I'll buy it when it's all done and then and pick it up. I have no problem with that. You know what I mean? I can wait. Hogwarts Legacy is missing a, a, a mission. I still haven't played it. It's been over a year. I don't care. Hey, I did. I downloaded Red Dead uh, 2 and started it soon, and the game's only uh, seven years old. There you go. Yeah, that's part of the problem. Friend hoppers. They have a part of the crowd when the, con uh, the content creator are playing and hyping up a game, and that's the biggest fuel. And I don't blame people for doing that, Argus. I mean, they're doing their job, right? They're... they're like, if someone... If someone paid me to play their game, I would be straight up tell people, yeah, sponsored by such and such, and I'm playing the game, right? Damn right. If I can if I can get paid to play a game, I don't I don't blame that on the person doing that for their career, right? What I don't like is people hype up a game that's a shit game because they're getting paid and they don't tell their actual opinion on it. Right? Robert Jones says, no reason to ever buy a single-player game at launch. The only reason, Jones, I can see is if you don't want to get spoiled. But if you don't want to get spoiled, you know, stay off stay off social media, right? Right? 
I know I know some of you guys are going to buy this game, and which is cool. But what I do ask is no matter what game you buy, if you pre-order it, buy it ahead of time, after I tell you the stories of broke, buggy, unfinished games that take 6, 8, 12, 18, 24 months to work, I just don't want to hear you bitch about that it's broke and unfinished. That's all I'm asking. Because there's one thing I can say is I did not, it's not that I didn't tell you it was going to happen. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Speaking of, people always think that there's a there's a thing going on in the video game industry where white men just like to complain, right? Which I can see why. Okay. But they've been complaining about how modern day games are taking women and kind of making them more manly or unattractive. Okay. Now, I want to put this out there. I grabbed the best pictures I could, not some of the ones that are really bad online. I'm giving the best examples of video game characters that are scanned in and then put into a game, okay? Now, one of one of the best-known ones, okay, because there's always people that always complain and say, well, it doesn't really matter. It's just the actor, and they can change what they want, which is 100% true. But some of the best-known characters is... Here's one of a man. I don't know if you know this man, but this guy looks exactly like his character. Okay. A man looking exactly like the man he's playing inside the actual game. I don't know what his name is. What's his name? Okay. All right. So there's Keanu Reeves looking like Keanu Reeves. Yeah, it's the guy from Fortnite. Okay. Then we have the next version. Okay. Okay. The next version we have, hold on one second. All right, then we have the second example here of guy scanned in. There's his real face and there's his in-game face. They didn't they didn't change it. Man looks like man. Man looks like man. Okay. Peter Salva, right? There he is. There he is. Okay. Then let's go with let's go with Hold on. Let me let me get then we have, we were just talking, we were just talking about Star Wars. Okay. Talk about Star Wars. Look, guy scanned in, guy's face, one to one, right? No change, no nothing. That's what it is. Actor, character, that's what it is. Okay. It's amazing. I know. Okay. There it is. Are we on the same page right now? Guy looks like guy. Don't really change guy. Guy looks like guy. Right? Man still looks like man. Man, good looking man, still looks like good looking man. Okay? You got you got three of them, right? Then then we go with Tomb Raider. We talked about Tomb Raider earlier. Okay. This is the actress. She looks good, right? Tomb Raider. Looks good. Okay? This is earlier on. This is before the, what's happened in the industry now. Right? There it is. Laura Croft. Okay. It looks good. Okay. Fantastic, right? Then we look at... Then we look at this, right? There's there's the model. There's the character. There's the character there. Okay. Now, again, I don't know if they've been photoshopped in any way, shape, or form. These are just the pictures I, I grabbed. Okay. <clears throat> The reason I bring it up, Rose, is because people think that we're crazy. 
they're saying that they're not making them uglier. And my proof here is that a guy scanned in still looks like guy. Girl scanned in looks completely different than girl scanned in. Why is this? Why is this? Okay. And I'll say the exact same thing I said to Travis earlier. Because it's my channel, I'm going to bring up things that I have and what I'm talking about. And this is a thing that people keep telling us that's not happening. They're not making, they're not making uglier people. Okay. And yet they are, they are doing it. Okay. Then you look at the character here. Okay. And I grabbed a good picture. There wasn't a good side by side, the side by side of this character with their actress. They grabbed the worst picture possible of K Vess. Okay. And then this is the character. That's her. Right. Now this one's gonna be a little harder. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to do this. Hold on. Okay. So you can look at it. And they, for some reason, they want to make the females more male. I, I, I don't get it. I don't get it. The women that they're scanning in for these things are gorgeous women. Right? They gave her a they gave her a cleft chin. Okay? They they make them worse looking than they are in the actual which makes no sense, right? And then we have another one. We have another example here. And and people people think we're making this shit up because Again, it's not a big deal. Well, it, it is a deal because it is happening. Okay? And for people to say it's not happening, it is happening. It happens more and more every time another game comes out. Right? Look at look at this look at the problem that Stellar Blade was right? they just took the model and stuck her in the game. Took a beautiful girl, put her in the game, beautiful girl. And that was staring up the I I industry. Okay? Then you look at then you look at this one. Right? I have two pictures of her. Hold on, let me let me find. Right? Here's Mary Jane. Regardless of if you like the girl or not, if you think she's pretty or not, the fact is, why can you scan in and it's him? Right? No change, no nothing. Okay. Goofy topic? Doesn't really fucking matter if it's goofy or not. I'm just pointing out the actual actual things that are happening in the industry that people say that are not happening in the industry. They are making women look uglier in video games. Right? He looks fine. He looks fine. He looks fine. All right? So to say that people, that uh, everyone's making a big deal of it, that's not what they're doing in the video game industry. They're not trying to make, they're not trying to make women uglier. Now, beauty is the eye of the beholder, okay? And when I play video games, I honestly don't care about if it's the real person or not. I just care if it's a, a cool looking person, an attractive looking person, right? I really don't understand. At 30 frames per second, I don't care how ugly they look. Right? I, I play video games for Power Fantasy, right? I make my own characters. Anytime we can make our own character, I make my own character, right? Some people make ugly characters. Some people make really thin characters. Some people make fat characters, right? But when you play a, a character or there's characters in a video game, right, that are scanned in from actual people, they usually don't really change them that much because they scan them in. The reason they hired them is because of what it is. But yet, for some reason, now obviously, Troy Baker doesn't get scanned into a lot of the games that he plays. He's just a voice actor, right? They don't use him. They hire someone else and they bring someone. Same with uh, with Ellie, okay? Like, the voice actress and the scanned actress are two different people. Can we see the Outlaws chick again? Yeah, yeah. Uh, let me find. Here's here's the picture that that's on the internet, which... I don't I don't do this like because this this is bad, right? This is the picture that they showed which is being manipulated. 
they, she looks much worse here, right? So I don't want to, that, that's the one that they're showing on the internet. But uh, here she is. They're not making men prettier. Maybe it's just because they're looking through the eyes of a woman, but those characters are just not handsome. What I'm saying, Alien, is when a man gets scanned in, they're just scanning the face, right? I'm not saying if they're handsome or pretty or ugly. I'm just saying they're, when a man gets scanned in, Keanu Reeves looks like Keanu Reeves. Elvis looks like Elvis, right? Um, uh, uh, Monaghan looks like Monaghan, okay? Now, when the women get scanned in, they're altering them big time. Is, is the point I'm making. Right? It's like they can't have a good-looking protagonist. And when they do, people lose their mind. Right? People lose their mind. Ubo's off scanners broken overnight. She's a wifey material, for sure. Let me see what you guys are saying up here. Uh, but does that make it relatable to uh, Blockies? Ah, she's not bad. I have a chance since she she was real. Or making a woman mainly make them more powerful roles, so that's the belief that she she uh, be able to do. I don't know what they're doing. I don't know why they change... I don't know why they change the characters like they do. I don't. The only, the only thing I'm pointing out is that they are doing it. Right? You can look at games made before the last six years and the char the girl characters look fine. The last the last six years, they've they've drastically changed what women are in video games. And not to say they're doing it everywhere. I'm just saying they're doing it. <clears throat> All the guys you showed were well-known celebrities, though. Monaghan wasn't a well-known celebrity. He wasn't a well-known celebrity beforehand. He was in Gotham and stuff like that. He did other things. He's more of a celebrity now, Rose, because of Jedi Fallen Order and because of the parts that he's gotten. So you're absolutely correct there. So wait, you're saying that if you're a well-known celebrity, um, why couldn't they just be the voice actors? Right? They've done that before. They have voice actors come in that don't look exactly like the person. Chris Pratt's a good-looking guy. They didn't make Mario look like Chris Pratt. Right? What I'm, what I'm saying is that they change certain characters because they don't... They're trying to make a statement. They are trying to make a statement. So because it's a because it's a voice actress, they have to be ugly. Is that what you're saying? And celebrities that are not ugly, they're okay to be scanned in because they're they're good looking. Is that what you guys are saying? So celebrity, if if it's if it's an ugly celebrity, they're not allowed to put their face scanned in. They have to change them up. Or are they okay? But a, a pretty celebrity, they keep the same. But a pretty voice actress, no, they have to make them ugly. Would I agree with you? I didn't see what you said. Let me scroll back up. Uh, Prossy, uh, you are correct about how they look not mattering. What people make ombridge is with the motivation of the reason behind doing so. The ideology of beliefs uh, are involved in it. Yes, yes. They're, they're changing it for a reason, right? I think our problem in this country is I'm fine with the average woman from European uh, Europe, for example. However, the average woman or man from the U.S. is a fat pig. <laughs> you can scan a male uh, actor's face into the game, and without telling me the name of the actor looking at him, do the same with the female actor and stare at the screen. Again, who the fuck is this? Right? All people that say the Stellar Blade, one doesn't look like her. You're crazy. Yeah, she looks ex like her 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 chin looks goes from like this to 
this. It's like very, very minute changes. Right, you're ugly. So unknowns, are, you're, you, you can be ugly. Uh, then you look at the characters made by the E's, Resident Evil women, even the woman Stellar Blade, right from uh, Metal Gear, or what the movie star tells them to use their, their likeness in the game. Well, no, Water, obviously they're bringing Keanu Reeves in the game because Keanu Reeves is a popular actor, and they're scanning him in because they're using him as an actor, right? They're using his looks and his personality for what it is. Keanu Reeves could have just voiced the guy, and they could have made him look completely different. Right? My thing is, when they scan these people, like, she did all the work. She's the actress, right? She did all the work. But yet the character doesn't look anything like. Right? Oh, that's an ugly one. Let's just get rid of that one. Right? I'm not saying she's ugly. I'm just saying that she doesn't look anything like the actress that's scanned in. Right? But yet when the actors, okay, the actors that do it, they're, they're, they're not changed at all. So let me, let me, hold on. Let me find out. What is her name? Humberly Gonzalez. So let, let, let's uh, let's do this, right? She's an actress. She's not just a voice actress. She's an actress. But because she's not a known actress, is what you're saying earlier, is that this is why they changed her up, right? If she was a famous actress before she came on, they wouldn't change her, is what Rose is saying earlier, right? I mean, she's been in quite a quite a couple of things here. As a voice actress, and as as herself in a in a movie, just because you don't know who she is doesn't mean she's not a right. She she's been in a bunch of different things. Right. She plays an avatar in Avatar. But is she famous? <laughs> but she's not a huge draw like Keanu. But to say that, to to say that, there's a line of superstardom. They get to look like themselves, and the person that doesn't look like themselves, right? Wouldn't it wouldn't it behoove them to, if the actress becomes a huge celebrity, wouldn't it behoove them to keep her as the main actress in the in the video game because it would bring more people? Oh, she was in that game. <clears throat> Still waiting for my uh, Dead or Alive Extreme Beach Volleyball sequel. <laughs> it was funny when they showed pictures of the CEO of Stellar Blade's wife in Steps, uh, in Steps of Supermodel. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, the artist, the, the the wife that was the artist, and then the and then the supermodel itself, right? If you told me, if you told me the artist was a supermodel, I would have I would have believed you. They can't predict the future if said person's going to one day be huge. Okay. Malahan was not a huge celebrity. Here, I, I will I will look him up what he had before. Hmm. 
Okay. So. Monahan did literally just just small things, roles when he was younger. Okay. His first big role, let's see, I, I could name I could name 40 things that he's been here, and you would know none of them. Okay? None of them. The first thing that he got was was 2015, 2019, which was Gotham. That's where people would know him from. Okay? And then he got Jedi Fallen Order, which which was filmed during the same time as Gotham. So your logic is that already known. That's that is one hundred percent bullshit. It was literally filmed during the exact same time as Gotham was happening. Monahan wasn't known worth of shit for all the stuff that he did beforehand. This is what his breakout performance was. This and this happening in the same time. So stop. He wasn't a mega star that was coming out. He is a great actor. Great actor. What are, no one knew who he was. No one could even name his name. They're like, oh, that's that's the guy from Gotham. He's he's the Joker. That's what they knew him for. So explain the GTA 5 characters. You you mean the guys that got scanned in that look exactly the same? The exact same of what they look like in actual real life? <laughs> Which proves my point even more. Pepsi, I, I appreciate you bringing that up. Which proves that proves my point even more. Gotham was out from 2015 to 2019. He was in 20 episodes of the entire run of the show. Which is... Let's see. Which is 100 episodes? More than 100 episodes. He didn't even show himself until like season 4, I believe. I'll, I'll I'll find it exactly. Uh, let's see. First time he showed himself was the blind fortune teller. And then he didn't show he didn't show himself again for quite a bit. So 2000 Let me see. Jeremiah Jeremiah Vasquez is this the he, His first appearance was in 2015. Okay? Then again didn't show up again for almost 2 seasons. Which he came back in 2017. Season 1. They liked his performance. Explored his character further. He returned in the beginning of Season 2. Promptly killed off. For the three episodes arc. Okay. Then didn't come back again. Uh, till Season 2. Which he made an appearance for a brief moment. Running a nightclub catering. Then came back in Season three and then he had a season four
So 20 episodes of uh, over 100 episodes. He's he's more known for Cal Kessis than he is for Joker. Just putting it out there. Mike, absolutely correct on this topic as a whole. I don't know of anyone that, that can contest that the other the biased delusion. No offense. I enjoy you all. Look, I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to be like. I'm not trying to be like. I'm. I'm correct. I'm just putting it out there that people are saying that there is no. There is no thing. There is in the last five to six years, they have 100% changed the way people look. And you're a lot of disagree, Rose. You're a lot of disagree. But it's it's one way for the other and not for the other. Brian Cutler, what are you doing right now? You're being retarded. If you want to be retarded, go somewhere else. <clears throat> that's because i watch other sources on this stuff outside just three examples you guys forget that these game devs and just journalists come out and admit that these changes yeah and and i i'm just putting it out there again you guys can think how you want i pointed out proof of of guys don't get changed but the women do get changed just saying I brought the most noticeable guys and the noticeable girls that came out recently. Cyberpunk 2077 is three years old. Men didn't change. Men look like men. Right? The women that came out in the last six years don't look like the same people that they scanned in the machine. Millions of hot characters in the games. Look at all the females in the Final Fantasy games especially. Not the point I'm proving, Rose. The point I'm proving is that they are changing the characters of people that get scanned in. I didn't say that all female characters are ugly. I'm putting a point that they are making changes to the actual females. Thirty. Can it be related to the strike about scanning actors' faces and not paying them? The strike brought up a, a lot of stuff to light. Sure, but th think about this, right? Uh, what, what's the what's the actress's name that plays Gramora and plays um, I forget her name off the top of my head, right? They scanned her face the entire time, and she's Avatar, right? She is the main one of the main characters in Avatar. Uh, what's her what's her name? Zoe Sandalia. Thank you. Right? She's not a blue creature. Right, but they used her face, the, the the voice acting, the acting of the of the whole thing, and even then, you can look there and go, yeah, it's her, that's her, right? Yeah, if you Z, right? If you like ugly women, by all means, like I said, beauty is the eye of the beholder. I'm just pointing out the fact that men haven't changed, and the women do. Just saying. I'm also not offended by a good-looking man. In no way, shape, or form. She's not blue? <laughs>
You know, the, you know the greatest part about this at the end of this conversation? You guys still live. You're still moving on. You're still breathing. You can still like what you like. I'm just taking a, a point and showing that they are changing in AAA games that make millions, tens of millions, if not hundreds of millions of dollars. They are changing women the way they look. But they're not changing the men. They scan a guy's face in, the guy stays the same. They scan a woman's face in, they're making her uglier. You, you, you look at you look at Horizon, right? Look, there's my there's Callahan, man. Look at him. If I took one picture away, you would know who it is. Bam. She was good looking. This is before the change. Good looking girl, still good looking girl. What happened? 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 Then we have this abomination. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> Is that the actress? Is that the actress? She actually... She's cute. She's she's cute. I don't know what this is. She she's cute. Oh Rose, nobody see, I brought up that. I brought that up when they first changed Spider Man from 2018 and when they changed it when they brought him in, right? And we're like when they did the remaster, I'm like, why are you changing this? But there was a different reason they changed that. And it wasn't to do with the looks. It was because of when Spider-Man came into the thing, they decided to go with a younger and make him younger. They made him look younger. They changed that for a more of a, uh, more of a association with Tom, Tom's character with the game and the movie. These things are publicly stated in people themselves. Trust me, you don't have to, uh, to dig too far. Again, I'm not saying the whole industry is. Right. Uh, I'm not saying in any way, shape, or form the whole industry is that way. All I'm saying is they are making changes. And I'm pointing it out because people are like, no, they're not. But they are. To be honest, I bet some of these actors and actresses don't care, but they just get uh, get checked probably a big one. Here's the thing. They 100% care, Salty. Trust me. They 100% care. You know? Do you know why actors don't wear masks in, in, in TV shows? Because you know what sells? Their face. You know why? Do you know why uh, Pedro Pascal didn't want to wear the helmet as the Mando? Because people didn't know it was Pedro Pascal behind the, the mask, right? Actors and actresses will only do it for a certain period of time because they want to know that they're like, that's me behind that. I got to make sure people know it's me behind that because that's who I am. And that is the difference, okay? Right? That's their money maker. The people that get changed probably don't have a choice or say in the matter. Not true as well. Right? They probably don't even they probably don't 
they probably don't even say what they're doing. They're like, oh, yeah, yeah, you're scanning, you're, you're, you're going to be in a video game. Oh, this is so cool. This is a... They can get away with a lot of things. They can get away with a lot of things. I mean, not known actors and actresses compared to famous ones. Again, it would it would behoove the character if if a person wasn't a super celebrity and then comes into a game. Now, obviously, if you're a well-known celebrity, it's going to cost a lot more money to get those people to come into your thing. But if you get a person from a from in that mid-tier point where they've they've had years of experience of acting, but they're not super well known yet, you can get in with them on the ground floor, okay? And then you can use them and when people look at certain things, they go, oh, he was in this movie? Oh, he was in this game. And it's like promotion for them, right? People know that Keanu Reeves is a character inside Cyberpunk 2077, and they buy the game just because he's in it. You don't even get to operate. You don't even get to use him in my as the main character. You know what I mean? Like, he's just a character in the actual game. Yeah. Trust me. Actors are the most self-indulgent people in the world. They all want to be the center of attention. Hence, why they're actors. <laughs> I worked with them for 20 years. It doesn't matter if it's a guy in a commercial that no one knows, or if it's someone that's a super celebrity that everyone knows. Would you please recap why you decided not to spend your money on Star Wars? When did I say I, I wasn't spending money on Star Wars? This is the first shot in the industry. Most will do whatever it, uh, they ask and they mentioned before. Oh, yes. Yes, they'll do whatever it takes to get their job. Yesterday concerning the business model. But when did I say... I'm not spending money on Star Wars. I, I never said that. What I said about the business model, if you're talking about Star Wars Outlaws, is that what you're talking about? Are you, are you talking about Star Wars Outlaws specifically? The, the business model that they're doing with the single-player game with a season pass, I, I disagree fundamentally with that. Because one, you're you're promoting you're promoting a game that's not fully out yet, but yet you want me to pay the full price up front. That's a no no. I don't like that for any. It's not about Star Wars. That's any game that's trying to to fundamentally get all your money up front when you're not giving me a full product. I have to wait for the full product. Example A: Redfall. If you bought the hundred and twenty dollar version of Redfall for the season pass, we are one year since that game came out. Where is the DLC? Where's the obligation pass? Okay. So when you come in and say that I my business sense of a business model about Star Wars, that has nothing to do with Star Wars. It has everything to do with Ubisoft and their scummy monetization practices of what they're trying to do. It has nothing to do with Star Wars itself. Who's to say the gaming industry doesn't do uh, do the same? Oh, for uh, for actors, eh, they could, they could. Not like, not not for not for the same same thing as as Hollywood. Salty. I mean, sure. I'm sure people do favors for people to get into positions or put them into a game or or something like that. Argus says, uh, Sweet Baby Inc. has other companies that they own. Part of that are, are tied to Anna, uh, sorry, Arkeesian. Uh, that's always a hard name to say. And other gamer gate folks. 
Kind of ironic that the video game companies changing the stuff are the same ones that would save my body. Look, again, this wasn't... I wasn't bringing up people's faces to start something. It's already, it's already there. I'm just putting the pieces together for people that go, well, it's not there. I don't understand. People are just taking this out of proportion. Well, they're, they're not. They're not. They're, they're literally showing you... Like, you look at the East and where they make good-looking women. And then you look at the West and they... They're, they're dumbing down the looks of the women. They're trying to make them more masculine for some reason, right? They're trying to make them more... And I don't know why they're doing it. I don't know if it's because they they want to make them more manly to so it's believable, right? Like, Scarlett Johansson, when she played Black Widow in Marvels, I didn't look at her and go, eh, it's not... I, like, I know where I'm at. I'm watching a comic book film and the girl's kicking ass, right? I don't need her to be, like, 400 pounds big big bulky woman to, to take down a big guy right like i know what i'm watching right so if i watched if i watched the character like black widow and and florence Pugh, and then i watched the girl that played the taskmaster fuck's sake okay it's like what are you doing SBI stuff uh, goes deeper than some people uh, realize, if you know. Yeah, I mean, they're looking for money. There, I, I would love to get, but no one will ever talk. I think the only person that's talking, if you listen to, and you could take it, I, I don't take anything anyone says from, from a straight-up value, right? Like, from what they said, because people say stuff because they're doing their thing on, on the internet, right? But, uh, what's his name? Uh, Grums was on Eric July's podcast the other day. And he was talking about what's happening in the industry. No other industry person talks about this that, that's a developer because they don't want to get blacklisted. That's one thing that video game industry and movie industry have in common. If you come out and say something along the lines that goes against the grain, you will get blacklisted and you will not work in that industry again or won't work for a very long time, right? And this is why developers don't come out and talk about certain things because they go from one place, studio, one studio to another studio and they don't want to say something that will stop them from making money. Stop providing for their families. So they just stay quiet. Then you have Grums who doesn't give a shit. Because he's been in the industry for so long. You know what I mean? Oh, we talked about that the other day. I have no problem with with Jennifer. Uh, what's her name? Julia Julia Gardner. I have no problem with her. She was fantastic in Ozark, but you're taking a character that was in four pages, four pages of Silver Surfer over two series, two volumes, whatever. Okay, she was in four pages. The character itself is only in like five five comics itself, and yet Silver Surfer, the main Silver Surfer, is in like a thousand. But yet they chose to pick that character. Definitely can't spill the beans until you leave the industry. Right. I saw an Asmogol video. Supposedly that Grums person is scamming people. No, you're talking about... I, I saw what you're talking about, Krebsy. You're talking about his video game. Right, you're talking about his video game that he's making that he's never brought up, but it's in his bio, and the people that are complaining about him also have to sell stuff in their bio as well. Yeah, I, I watched that video with Asmogold. Right, and Grums was on Eric July, and someone in his in his chat asked about the game, and he says, "I'll be more than happy to go talk to Asmogold about it." I think it's called Ember. I think that's the I think Grums's game that he's working on is is Ember.
And even if even if that's the case, even if that's the case that he's he's um trying to do that. Right? Even if he's if he's trying to scam people, which right now is not proven, it's just people saying that because it's the opposite side doesn't like what he's saying. Um in no way, shape, or form would this be better for him going after people that are in the industry. <clears throat> this is the same guy that said something about the, this, yeah, the start screen, the start screen guy. That's right. Yeah, I forget his name. Um, Mark Kern. Mark Kern is his name. He worked. Uh, he was one of the reasons that World of Warcraft succeeded in what it did. Oh, Cutler's back. He's finally putting words in the in the in the channel. Hello, did you have a stroke or was your cat on your keyboard earlier? Didn't do much research. Listen to it in the background. Just remember, chat, there aren't enough female characters in the Marvel Universe to make a movie, so they needed to change one. That's right. Because reasons. <laughs> Definitely couldn't couldn't have made a movie about anything else. You have to change the men into women. Salty. Be, 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 be. Oh wait, that's just me. If it was a cat earlier, that's a really talented cat because it knew to hit the A button or B button and then hit enter and then A and then enter. Hopefully, this actor isn't like the who played Marvel. Uh, she seems like a really good, like a really nice person. If, if you ever watched Ozark, she plays a completely different character than what her persona is, which is really good. Why she's an actor? Um, it's it's a fan, she she plays a fantastic role in Ozark. If you've never seen Ozark, yeah, she's very good in Ozark. I thought something about the Xbox. It's game changing. Call me after the stream. Okay, I will. Oh, Brie Larson. Well, my problem with Brie Larson is one, the movie that she offended white people, white men about, was a movie that I wasn't interested in. So I, I get her point, what she was saying, because it was um, uh, what was it? Um, time. Uh, what was that? Whispers of Time. No, what was the hell that? Right? So I'm okay. But the problem is that people can't separate certain things in context um, because they she didn't say that to the actual white men for Marvel. She said that for for the other film that she was in. But at the same time, doing marketing material and stuff for the Marvels and for Avengers and stuff like that, she does come across off a little a, a, a little... I don't know, rude or whatnot. Wrinkle in time. That's it. I forget what the hell it was called. I didn't I didn't watch it. Like who who's that meant for? Let me see.
let's see. Uh, Wrinkle in Time, 2003 film. Wrinkle in Time, 2018 film. It's a young adult science uh, fantasy novel. Okay, so... Yeah. Wrinkle in Time... The young adult fiction book, right? So in the context that she was saying from the source material and stuff, and again, I didn't watch, right? I, I didn't watch the movie. I have no idea what the book is. I have no idea about Wrinkle in Time, right? In the context of what she was saying in that one interview that she says that white men shouldn't watch something was because of she doesn't care about a 40-year-old man, what they do in this in that particular film. She wasn't talking about that for Marvel. Now, obviously, Marvel is for kids, but then the kids grow up to be adults and they still like those characters, and that's why they like the lore. But people were taking that as, well, if you like this book, I don't care what a 40-year-old man says, even though the 40-year-old man is also reading comic books, right, and graphic novels. And so people look at that and go, well, if you can't take criticism from a 40-year-old man that maybe I like Wrinkle of Time and you're not making it for me, and then they take that to heart type of thing. I didn't take it very much. But then the rest of the stuff that she was saying when Marvel stuff came out, I was just like, oh, boy. Right. So. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know why you guys can't see him. EA plays increasingly by double for twenty dollars. Is that does that count including into Game Pass? Water, I haven't played I haven't played a football game from EA in a decade. Over a decade. And they haven't made a, uh, a college game. I'm telling you, I'm staying clear from that. I know some of you guys are going to play it because you guys are hard up for NCAA. But there, like I said, there is that there is that college game that the same people that make the 8-bit version, uh, the 8-bit version for college that I made for um, Legend Bowl. They're making it a college one. I would rather give my money to the independent developer making a college football game than give my money to EA for anything. All right, it's 1230. That's going to do it for me. I appreciate you guys coming out and hanging out with us uh, this morning. If you liked it, make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. If you'd like to go above and beyond that, become a member as little as $5. We're here Monday through Thursday from 10 o'clock in the morning to about noon Eastern. Uh, we go over news stories, have conversations, bring up different things, interact with chat if you like that. Again, do those things I just said. Uh, we also do live streams at night. Tonight we're playing some Helldivers, uh, Helldivers 2. Uh, we're playing with Kingard. Uh, we're going to be playing against the Automatons tonight. We have two spots open. Anybody that wants to come in and play with us, you're more than welcome to, to join us. Uh, other than that, we do uploads, and we also do a podcast on Thursday nights called Generation X Gaming, which is a weekly podcast that goes over a few of the top stories from the past week, and we rant along the way. Again, appreciate it very much, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.